The last type of 3D associative array we want to look at is the path array. In the context of our city here, we're going to use this light fixture and array it along the center line of the road. So we'll go ahead and select the path array from the ribbon, select our light fixture first, and select our pathing curve second. Now, as we move the cursor along, we can see what's happening. The objects are intelligently following the pathing curve, whether it's 2D or 3D, is immaterial, it follows along. The number of items that we want to place along it, we're going to go ahead and take an educated guess. I'll put in 15. In reality, what we're going to have to do when we get done with this is hold a 100 foot distance between each light pole. So we'll see how close I got by taking my educated guess here in a moment. We can now go ahead and exit the command and go into the editing interface, simply a double click, and we'll go ahead and work with the ribbon up here. And we can see that by selecting 15 items, they were equally spaced or divided along that defining curve. So we weren't quite right. We didn't hold our 100 feet. So what I need to do is switch this array type from divide to measure and then override this distance with the 100 foot that I wish to hold. Now we can see here that the base point of the defining curve was held, but we don't quite have enough of the lighting trestle. So rather than guessing, why don't we just come down here, select this point and drag it out along the curve and just let it figure out how many we're going to need. Now it's worth noting that we could also have multiple rows and levels. Now in the case of this light fixture design, it probably doesn't make much sense, but if we had another roadway on the other side and we wanted to have another row of lighting fixtures, you can see the result there. And if we had multiple levels, they would move up in the Z direction, like so. So it really depends on the application, what you're trying to design. You have complete 3D functionality, just as you did in polar or rectangular. So I've just simply edited them back to one to get back to the state where we started. Now it's also worth noting that you can use any of the edit source, reset or replace items just exactly like we had seen in prior examples. So as you can see, the hard part of this example is actually drawing the light trestle in the first place and then drawing your roadway. After you're done with that, the path array really takes care of all the geometry, traversing all of the 3D geometry along the centering line and doing all the computational work for you, so long as you know a couple of little tricks here in the editing ribbon. Really pretty straightforward and quite powerful.